Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome into Creekside Chronicles today. And we're so excited to have you all here. And uh, wow, I just listened to those songs. And man, it just gets you. It just really does. And when you when you begin to understand that we're all here, and, and although we're so dispersed throughout Canada and the U.S. and other places, but the good Lord above is with each and every one of us right where we are at. Amen. And so um, just so, just so good to see everybody today. Hope you're all doing well. I want to start at the beginning here and welcome everybody in. Um, it's good to have Tiffany and oh, everybody here. And, uh, Joe and Dave and Daisy and, and uh, let me see here, Rebecca and Carol. Um, Deb, and um, let me see who else we got here. Carol, how you doing? Peter, welcome in. And um, let me see here. Scott, good morning. I see you say good morning, forks. <laughs> I'm sure you meant good morning, folks. <laughs> I get the point. I don't know. <laughs> see what I did there. Um, let me see here. Who else we got in here? Get on farms, Johnny and Christine. Good morning. Uh, my friends, how you guys doing? Dave and Sandy, our dear, dear friends, supporters of the channel, so faithfully uh, welcome in. And yeah. um, so glad to have you here. It really does my heart well to see so many folks. David G. from Arkansas, good morning to you. He's out on the lake. Um, he's at the lake today, mm -hmm. traveling. Merton and Sue, hello. Welcome in. Welcome, so welcome. glad to have you here. And I don't want to miss anybody. Um, Trying not to. Hound of Goshen uh, can never. Um, it is 
What's Curtis and, Curtis Kate. and Kate? Yes. Curtis and Kate. Thank yes. you. Forgive me for that. And Joyfully Orange, Deb, how are you doing? So glad you're here. Oh, welcome, Deb. Welcome in. And uh, Jen, good times. Uh, Jen and Steve, hello. Marshall from BC, glad to have you here. And so many folks just jumping right in here. So that's good. And not for nothing. And <laughs> we're glad to have you here. And yes. that is, uh, oh, I can never get, keep everyone straight. But anyway, forgive me for that. Um, Paul, the bearded carpenter. And Deb Rusignolo, how are you? Ginger, that's who I was trying to remember. Ginger. Um, good morning, Ginger. And um, Jesse and Lisa, how are you guys doing? Love them so much. Yes, and um, let me see here. Can you say Jen and Steve. Yeah. And um, and let me see. Just don't want to miss anybody. Seems like and Christine. I would just, how I'd are like you? to say quickly if if you are here and you've not said hello, if you could just say hello, because that's the only way we yeah. do know who's here. If if you don't mind doing that, yeah. we really love to know sure. who's here. Miss Ann, how are you doing, sweet lady? Glad to have you in here with us today. And I hope I've not missed anybody. Um, but um, we're just excited today uh, about what the Lord is doing through. Um, yeah, I need a master list. That's right. So glad to have everybody here and just excited about what the Lord is doing through Creekside Ministries. Amen. And um, yes, Christine. We're believing for 40 as well. That's what we said. So we'll just let God look after the miracle of that and just share it out right where you're at this morning. Um, go call somebody, send them a message, wake them up and tell them, hey, you need to come to Creekside Chronicles this mm -hmm. morning. It's great. And, um, you know, it's it's a wonderful time to be here. Um, beautiful day outside but i'm excited about what we're going to talk about today yes, I, am too. I really truly am and so um yeah hit the like button and all those good things mr willie mr willie how are you get the good to have you here always good always good. good we just hit 30 so let's keep it going and we're only 10 away from our goal last week we set a record um we're at 149 subs on the channel and um you know, getting that one more for 150 will be a milestone. Mm -hmm. um, I dream big with this ministry. I really do. Mm -hmm. And um, my goal, God's goal, our goal, and we want everyone to be part of it, is to just take this as big as it can get and make it a, a just a worldwide ministry where mm -hmm. people can come on a Sunday morning yes. and just feel so refreshed. Yes. Um, but more than that, we want to do great things we want to meet up with people and even during meetups and stuff wouldn't it be awesome like on the cruise to have a little sunday morning get together and, yes, it would. and all that sort of thing so yes. anyway i digress i want to get into the word of the lord today um i want to pull up here what we're going to be talking about today paul and the serpent acts 28 and 1 and i want to talk about how to treat a snake bite um and can I ask for prayers today? I've been dealing with, uh, I had a poisonous caterpillar get around my collar and my neck and stuff this week, and it's been quite a ordeal, doing much better today. But I just believe that when you're spreading the good word of the Lord, that the enemy attacks. And I know, and you recognize that the enemy attacks us. So would you please cover Joni and I? Um just cover us with your prayers so that this ministry will continue to grow. And there's so many things that we want to do. And, uh, you know, we just, we just warrant your prayers for sure. So let's, um, let's read some scriptures here. What do you say? And this is so good. Can you hear me? Okay. Everyone hear me? All right. All right. Acts 28 and one. And when they were escaped, now this, when, when I say escape, that means Paul, the apostle. This is a story about Paul. And uh, there was a shipwreck. And it's when they escaped, that means when they got off the ship, out of the shipwreck, they knew that the island was called Melita. And so, hey, Brenda, good morning. We're at 35. We're five away. Come on. <laughs> we can do this, can't we? And, uh, and so... 
now Melita is the common or the modern day Malta and it's still, you can go there today. And so the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. In other words, they treated them good, um, you know, to, to for compassion's sake. For they kindled a fire and received us every one. Now, this is Paul's writings. And when Paul, oh, I want you to notice that. When Paul um, gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And so the picture is very vivid. Um, there's a shipwreck. There's a storm. There's a shipwreck. People uh, made it out of the water onto the shore of Malta, where the people that lived there started a fire, tried to warm them up. Paul gathered some wood for the fire. When he laid that wood into the fire, um, there was a viper that came out of the heat, the fire, and bit him on the hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, now watch this, no doubt this man's a murderer whom though he escaped the sea or the shipwreck, yet vengeance or, you know, karma or the, the, the judgment of God, whatever they wanted to think about, um, suffereth um, not to live. And then it says, Paul shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm, no effects from this poisonous beast. Howbeit, they looked when he should have swollen up and died because that's what they were used to. You know, that's what they've always seen. Sometimes you need to just have your mind open to something you haven't seen before. But anyway, they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds. And now they said he was a god. Isn't it amazing how people's opinions can shift? <laughs> just by what they think they know. And so I want to um, talk about this story a little bit here this morning. And if you don't mind, um, you know, I, we want to ask the Lord to help us here. So right where you're at, will you uh, say a quick prayer for us as we do for you and over this word? Father in heaven, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for this word that's ever settled in heaven. Lord, I know the enemy wants to stop this word from going out today. I know the enemy is trying to distract. He's trying to detract from the weight and the anointing and the presence that we feel. So Lord, put a hedge around about us. Let everyone hear this and let it work and marinate in their spirit and their soul. And let the enemy be quiet and let God's people rejoice and let the word go forth. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. And uh, if prayer makes you uncomfortable, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> let, let it be so that God is with us. now. I want to start in on this, and I'm not going to get this done today. Um, I've been working on this since Tuesday, and the the more I read, and the more I pray, and the more I then the more I write, and the more thoughts come to me. Um, and so this is going to probably be a, a, another two for a two week series. But Paul's ministry to many, and I'm going to just jump right in here. Paul's ministry was so powerful. Um, before Paul was a minister, he was an opposer of the Christian church. And the Bible says that Paul killed more Christians than anybody else in the Bible. 
But that was before his transformation on the road to Damascus. That was before he became a Christian. Paul, before uh, Christianity, was Saul. And he was trained and taught by Gamaliel, the greatest teacher, they say, of all the historical uh, you know, schools and, and, and you know, all those sort of things. And so he was adamant in defending the Mosaic law. That's what made him so fiercely uh, uh, defended and held, you know, Christians as the problem. But then on the road to Damascus, God touched him and revelation came and he was blinded for three days and then understood that he had been wrong and that the Mosaic law was not for that time. It was grace and mercy. And so he became not Saul. Now he's Paul and one of the greatest preachers that there ever was. And so his ministry was uh, filled with, uh, uh, he was very bold and he would get in your face so much so that he, he tells us so many times that he was beaten with rods three times. He was stoned and left for dead. He was let down uh, over the city wall in the basket because a, a crowd was gathering to, to destroy him. Um, he was beaten up. He was robbed. He was spat upon whatever he went through it because of the message that he preached uh, and to many though he his ministry uh, is coming to an end he's been imprisoned and uh, now uh, he's on his way on a ship to Rome to where he will be beheaded um, to every onlooker it was over um, to everyone watching, to the casual, critical um, person, it was over. Um, you know, there was nothing left for Paul to do. He's in shackles on a boat and everything. Even the dogs agreeing with me. And so when God uh, is with you, I want to say this and forgive, I don't know what the dog's barking at. But when God is with you, never count yourself out at all. You see, to the casual critical onlooker uh, at Calvary, if you would, for an example, it looked like it was finished because even Christ himself said it is finished. But my friends, there is a big difference between saying it is finished and I am finished. You got to understand uh, Christ on Calvary did not say, I am finished. He said, it is finished. Uh, and there are chapters and there are things in our lives when we can look at it and say, it is finished. But my friends, if God is for you, who can be against you? Because it may be finished, but it doesn't mean you are finished. Uh, you know, you, you know, you can say, but I'm in a storm. That doesn't matter. The storm will end. You can say, well, I've been shipwrecked, but you can get to shore. You never mistake the ending of a chapter with the ending of the book. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Never mistake. I want to say that again. Never mistake the ending of a chapter for the ending of the book. Because chapters end, but new ones begin. You know, you are not finished. Uh, you are not too old. You are not too broken. You are not too messed up. Uh, yes, marriage may have failed. Yes, relationships may have failed. Yes, you may have lost a job. Yes, you may not have the help you used to have. Yes, you may have lost some things. But I'm here to tell somebody today, just because the chapter ended doesn't mean your book is over. You may have lost the land. You may have lost the car. You may have lost some uh, things and, and, and all of that stuff may be going on. You may be in a storm. You may be shipwrecked. And you may be in a strange land. You may not know which way to turn. You may have trouble sleeping at night and you may have trouble getting up in the morning. You may have fears and doubts, but I'm here to tell somebody this morning, and I know I'm right on the money because I feel such spiritual opposition to this word this morning, but I know this, just because the chapter is ending doesn't mean the book is 
over. Amen? Doesn't mean the book is done. Never mistake when God is finishing one chapter in your life for meaning that you are finished. Amen? It is finished is not I am finished. Someone say that with me. It is finished is not I am finished. Everybody, there's so many people that look at it and say, well, that's over. I'm done. No, it is finished is not I am finished. And you can look at Paul's ministry. And I'm sure everybody was looking at him going, well, um, he's, he's in shackles. He's in prison. He's on a ship. He's been shipwrecked. He found his way to the shore. Now he's been bitten by a snake. Surely it's over. Surely it's done. But never mistake what God is going to do for you just because one chapter has ended. See, why now? I look at I look at the scriptures and I go, why now? Why the storm? Why the snake attack? You know? And I'm sure you look at things uh, in your life and you're going, why now? Where did this attack come from? What happened? I thought I had enough money saved up. I thought I had this right. I thought I had that right. I thought I had it together. Hey, back to good. How you doing this morning? I thought, why now, God? Why am I going through this storm? I'll tell you why. Simple. Because you're pulling up to a fire and you're warming up. That's why. God is stirring your faith. You're getting better. You're getting stronger. You're thinking more of God. You're paying more attention to the reality of your eternal soul. You're getting up and you're listening to Chronicles. You're in church again. You're daring to dream again. You're feeling stronger again. You're feeling like you're ready to love again. You're feeling like you're ready to get some good rest again. And the devil can't have you getting better. So why now? Because he can't have us going around feeling good. He can't have us going around doing better, getting stronger with more faith. The devil can't have that. So why does he attack? Simply because you are getting closer to God again. Your spiritual uh, self is starting to feel enlightened again. You blew the dust off of that Bible that was on the mantle. You're starting to read that daily devotion book uh, in the mornings before you start anything else. You're starting to change how you're thinking in your mind. The word is beginning to creep into your spirit and your heart again. And you're starting to believe that you can actually make it to heaven, that your life can actually be better. That's why the attack comes. That's why the snake grabs onto your hand now. That's why you feel the opposition. Some of you get up this week. Some of you have been looking forward to Chronicles. But how many would say that, that the enemy has been trying every way possible to get you not to hear me to uh, talk to your heart today? I guarantee you there's people in here that you'll say you've had a tough week and you've had a struggle all week and you couldn't seem to get your mind straightened around. And many of you even thought, oh, why go listen to Chronicles this morning? It's so early and all of this and that. I'll tell you why. Because when you're feeling like you shouldn't is when you should. When you're feeling like you don't want to is when you have to. And that's when you begin to understand the reason I'm attacked right now is because I'm doing better. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you see, shipwrecks sink. And the enemy wants you to have a sinking feeling. Mm -hmm. mm, that's I'm telling somebody right now, I know I'm on the mark this morning. The enemy wants you to feel that sinking feeling to where what's the use and what's the sense and nothing will be better and nothing's going to improve and nothing is never going to be enough of this or never going to have enough money. I'll never get what I want. And I'm just going to give up. I'm going to dig a hole, jump in it and hide because that's what the devil wants you to do. Sink your faith, sink your hope, sink your dreams, sink your love, sink your strength, sink your rest. He wants to take you to the bottom where you can't even breathe, where he'll drown you in your despair and drown you in your doubt and drown you in your fears. That's what he wants to do. But I got a word for somebody beyond the storm. Watch this. Verse eight. 
I want to I want to read this. I didn't have uh, I should have put it up on the screen, but in verse eight, I got to put my little spectacles on here. It says this in verse six. We read it um, that they came to him. They changed their minds and said that he was a God. Now, that was in verse six. Watch this in verse eight. Just two verses later came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and a bloody flux to whom Paul entered and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. Hold on a minute. Are you telling me we just went from shackles and a prison and a shipwreck and a storm and crawling my way up on the beach and a snake biting me and an attack and people doubting me and people saying that I'm a murderer and then two chap or two verses just a few words later, it's a miracle? Exactly, because beyond your storm is a miracle and beyond your trial is a miracle and beyond your doubts is miracles and beyond your fears are miracles beyond all of that. That's why the enemy is oppressing you so much. We're at 40 right now. Thank God for 40. Amen. But that's why the enemy is oppressing somebody. Man, I feel his spirit here today. Listen, there's miracles coming for you folks. Some of you need healings in your bodies. Some of you need financial miracles. Some of you need a new job, car fix, a new house, a place to live. Some of you, your marriages are on the rocks. Some of you, your, 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 your faith is on the rocks and you can't sleep at night and you're tormented. But I'm telling you right now, beyond the storm, there's a miracle. Beyond the shipwreck, there's a miracle because you're gonna crawl your way out of the storm. God's gonna bring you out of the shipwreck. He's gonna warm you by a fire you're gonna shake off the serpent and you're gonna stand up and walk into a miracle i'm telling you somebody you're gonna talk to me you're gonna tell me in a week the miracle that god did for you this week oh I, sorry i i get passionate don't don't get uh wow there's a miracle for so i'm telling you this is what god spoke to me today i've been up i I've, I've been up going on this all morning i'm telling somebody right now god's there's a miracle there's a healing going to happen in this community and it's going to amaze people it's going to amaze people and god is going to shine forth his power god's going to shine forth his glory uh his he's going to there's a miracle coming for you this week because you've just crawled into the shipwreck. You've just crawled into the storm. You've just crawled away from the doubters and the, you've, you've made it through the attack and you're going to stand up and you're going to realize God's got something great for me on the other side of my storm. Someone say amen. <laughs> anyway, hang in there. Hang in there. There's a miracle. The miraculous is just beyond your storm. Hey, Jerry. The miraculous is just beyond your storm. You see, storms and shipwrecks, they position us for the miraculous. Paul would never have been there. He would never have seen the miracle of, of Bublius being healed, and he would have never seen over 3,000 souls uh, come to Christ in the first week that he was on Malta. He would never have seen it. Had he not gone through the storm, had he not gone through the shipwreck, had he not gone through the snake bite, had he not gone through the doubting crowd, he would have never seen the miracle. So don't fight against it. Just understand storms and shipwrecks and snake bites, they are positioning you for the miraculous. You say, well, there so many things are changing in my world and so many things I'm going through and, and this is keeping me up at night and this is happening. You better hold on. God's positioning you for the miraculous. God is positioning you for the miraculous. It's amazing what God's going to do. Now you watch this. The snake bites Paul's hand. And that was part of my title, how to treat a snake bite, you know, so it latches on to his hand. How do you deal with that? Well, I want to say this right from the beginning. How you deal with today's attack will determine tomorrow's success. Okay? How you deal with today's adversities will determine tomorrow's successes. You can let the poison surge through your body and then you will begin to spew the poison that has been sent to kill you. Or you can shake it off into the fire 
and say, I ain't got, ain't got no, ain't, ain't nobody got time for that. And somebody, you need to shake some stuff off. You've been distracted by some stuff. You've let poison poison you. And though it didn't kill you physically, it's destroying you mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. You are starting to spew the very poison that the enemy has made surge through your system. Isn't it better just to say, forget that, shake it off. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Shake it off. I'm not going to get bitter. I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to get vengeful. I'm not going to get uh, revenge. I'm not going to. I'm not going to destroy them. I'm not going to seek out people that I can destroy them with. I'm not going to spread my, my, my pain and my, I'm not going to project it. I'm not going to let the poison surge through me. Maybe the reason why some people just can't ever get happy is because of the poison they're allowing to surge through their system. You see, the snake bites his hand. He just shook it off. And there's some things we need to just shake off. You know, there's, you know, look, we, we, a lot of us have channels and a lot of us are creators on YouTube and we put videos out. And I bet you every person in here, I bet you every person in here has gotten a negative comment of some kind. Somebody's been rude to you, said something rude to you through your, uh, you know, channel, through a video or whatever. And you know what you've got to do? You got to look at it and say, it doesn't matter. I don't know them. They have no uh, voice in my life. They they will never, I'll never meet them. It, it, it's just a little blip, not even that on a radar. So why worry about it? Forget it. Don't even give it any, any heart strength or emotional investment. It just doesn't matter. There are so many people that are investing all their emotional stuff and, 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 and uh, emotional strength in the things that just don't matter. I've told people, I always told people when we're pastoring, I said, you know what? In six months from now, it won't even matter. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to take you out. It can't take you from God. None of those things. Just don't sweat it. Let it go. Let it go. It's all about focus. You know, how you deal with today's snake attacks will determine your tomorrow's success. You know, you can't let the devil's poison become your poison. You can't. You shake it off. Because some attacks are not worth it. All Paul wanted was to warm up. That's all he wanted to do. But isn't it amazing to me that good intentions always get attacked by selfish motives? It, it amazes me that good intentions always get attacked by selfish motives. You know, people that are trying to do good and want to do better and they do some good things and stuff like that. But there's always those people out there that are jealous of what they got or jealous of who they are or jealous of this or jealous of that. And rather than apply themselves to become better people, it's easier for them to badmouth, to talk about, to to try to wear them down, to spread gossip, to spread rumors, to make false accusations. Listen to me. Good intentions will always be attacked by selfish motives. It's just life. But don't drink the poison. Don't. The Bible says offenses will come. It's going to happen. But you don't have to drink the Kool-Aid. Come on, somebody. <laughs> now watch this. Paul, it says uh, in the scriptures, let me see if I can, I hope this is okay. Let me see. Uh, let me back up one scripture. Okay. Uh, so they got a fire going. Verse three, when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, you see, Paul collects, he picks up his own firewood because He's trying. He's doing what he can do. Can I say this? People need to stop depending on everyone else to stoke their fire. Oh, they love the fire. They love the heat, but they're not going to do anything to add to it. They're not going to do anything to help keep that fire going. 
Isn't it time we built some fires of our own? Isn't it time when we start doing what we can do um, and God will do the rest? Instead of always just sitting back and, and complaining and bickering and backbiting and running people down and, and all that junk, instead of spreading the poison, instead of just watching somebody else do all the work, why don't you build your own fire? You know, you're not going to make it to heaven. You're not going to make it to see Jesus Christ because your grandpa or your grandma were Christians. You're not going to make it, you know, to heaven because your friends or your pastor or, or me or someone you know is Christian. You're going to make it to heaven when you start building your own relationship with God, when you start building your own faith, when you take responsibility for your own fire. Amen. Now we can we can send you books and we love doing that. We do. Thank you, Jesse and Lisa, for doing that in the in the US there. Thank you for that. We can send you books. And I can you can come here every Sunday morning and listen to this old preacher go on and all that. But you've got to start getting to the place where you know what? I'm just not gonna get Tony and Joni to light my fire. I'm just not gonna wait for a book to arrive. I'm gonna do some things that increase my faith for myself. I'm going to start saying a few prayers. I'm going to start getting my mind right. I'm going to start getting my feelings right. I'm going to start working the work that needs to be done. I'm going to start reading the Bible. I'm going to start trusting God. I'm going to start singing praises. I'm going to do those things because there's too many people trying to ride someone else's coattail. And it's time you did the work for yourself. I don't, oh, I hope that is not offensive to anybody, but it's time we understood. God is an individual God, but he's an omnipresent God. But he wants a relationship just with you. And my relationship with God is not going to be your relationship with God. You need to pick up your own bundle of wood and you need to make a fire and you need to fan the flames and you need to do what you've got to do. You say, well, I don't have time for God. Then that's on you. Then don't complain if you don't feel him. God is not some light switch that in a, in a, in a sudden, uh, you know, storm of life, you throw the switch on and say, oh God, by the way, here I am. He's got to be someone that you know daily. He's got to be someone you talk to daily. He's got to be somebody that you're cognizant of that his spirit is there every day. Amen. And the only way you're going to do that is stop letting everyone else build the fire and you start building a fire for you. You know, watch this shipwrecks. <laughs> I love this. And, 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 and I, I look at the scriptures. I ask God all the time, help me to understand every point and every aspect of this. You see, Shipwrecks litter the beach with wood. How many have ever seen, you know, a shipwreck? How many have ever, the old wooden ones and, and the old ships that get washed on shore? You see, they break apart. Shipwrecks litter the beach with wood. And so some of the wood probably that they were burning was leftovers from the storm. See, the pieces we have left can still be useful. Amen. Amen. The pieces we have left can still be useful. You say, how is that possible? Well, if you look at the plagues in the Old Testament and Moses, he took a handful of ashes. God said, throw them in the air. And he did. And they turned into a plague of, of flies and, and all those sort of things. You see, long, long as Moses held on to them, It was just in his hand. But the minute he let go of them, it became miracle fodder, fire that God could use. But more than that, you look at Job, Job, 42 chapters in the book of Job. In the beginning, it says that Job, he was the greatest man in all the East. So that's great. That means the richest, the most famous. Everyone wanted, you know, to be friends with Job. But then Job lost everything. He lost his his children. He lost his barns. He lost his animals. He lost his health. And the scripture said that he was sitting outside the city gates, scraping himself in the dunghill. That's where he was sitting. 
because he had an unknown disease. And back then when you had an unknown disease, you couldn't stay within the city walls because you could infect the whole city. So part of the uh, uh, way that they solved those issues um, was put you in a leper's colony. And in, in, in Job's case, he was sitting literally in the dung heap, in the, in the waste pile outside the city where all the human waste and all the trash and all that was. That's where Job was sitting. The greatest man in the East, just a short while later, is now uh, sitting in this dung hill. And the dogs were licking his sores on his body. And it says that he reached down and he got a hold of a piece of potsherd. You know what that is? It's a broken clay vessel. And he found one piece of that broken clay vessel. And he began to scrape his sores on his body. It isn't much, but it's something to relieve um, the, the, the stress of all those sores. But if you continue on through the book, he goes from that dunghill. And at the end of the book in Job 42, it says that Job was greater in his latter day than he ever was in the former day. That means Job in Job 42 was greater than Job in Job chapter one. But he had to go through everything to finally get to that place at the end. What can God do with your leftovers? He can do all kinds of things if you will let him. But you've got to get up and do something. You've got to recognize. You've got to keep on going. You've got to keep on moving through it. You can do this. You know, why? How? Simple. I can do all things through Christ. And what the enemy has meant for evil, God has meant it for good. Now watch this. Malta, Malita, interpreted. It means honey. Honey. So God can take you from the bitterness of a storm and the bitterness of a shipwreck and the bitterness of a prison cell. He can take you through that storm and use it to put you in a sweeter place. You've just got to trust him. But it's going to take a storm to get you there. It's going to take a trial. It's going to take a test. It's going to take some loss. It's going to take some pain, some anxiety, some worry. But hang in there because God is going to take you to a sweeter place. So when Paul was bit, they waited and they watched and they anticipated his demise. <laughs> because there's, it says that, it says that they watched and waited for him to die. And they thought, well, he's a murderer and this is God's judgment. Because there's always onlookers that anticipate your failure. Always. And I want to say this. Those are the kind, hey, Dale, those are the kind of people that you do not need in your life. There's always people that are ready to talk about your past, that'll want to um, get a bullhorn and tell everybody about your failures. There's all kinds of onlookers that are just anticipating. Yeah, she's tried five times before, never made it. She'll never make it. Oh, she'll be in the church for six months till she finds another man and then she's gone. Oh, he'll be, he'll be here for three weeks and then disappear back to the drugs again. There's always onlookers that never have faith to believe that God can move you through a storm to the miraculous. And those are the people you don't need in your life. You need to learn the gift of goodbye. That means there's some things you just need to say goodbye to. Yeah, God, God can still use you. Broken or not, God can use you. He can put you back together. But there's always those kind of people. They're negative people. I don't want to be around negative people. I don't want to be around people that are, oh, drama, drama, drama. Give me a break, will you, please? There's enough drama already. We don't need any more. But give me people that can look at me and our situation, how we live here, and will stand with us and hold our hands up when we don't have the strength to do it. People that will look at us and encourage us and say, you can do this. You've got this. People that can look at us and go, you know what? It's going to be tough, but I know you've got what it takes to come through. And I'll say that to you, each one in here. It's going to get tough sometimes, but I believe in you. You've got what it takes to get through your storm. You've got what it takes to make it through that shipwreck. 
You've got what it takes to get through it. But it's amazing because they were standing there. You know what they're going? They're saying, they're saying the poison has killed everyone else. Maybe so. But here's a word for somebody right now. You need to stand up and say, but I'm not going to let the poison kill me. Oh, but they're waiting for you to die because the poison always gets you. And you need to stand there today, my friend, and say, no, not today. The poison's not going to get me today. I'm not going to let the poison kill me today. You know, you've always responded in a negative way to certain things. Now's your chance to stand up and say, not today. The poison's not going to get me today. You've always just caved in with fear and doubt and worry and dismay. But today you're not. You're going to stand up and say, not today, devil. The poison is not going to kill me today. Everyone else is waiting for the poison to kill you. Everyone else is talking about how the poison kills. But today you're standing up and you're saying the poison's not going to kill me today. Devil, you picked on the wrong person today. I'm not going to let the poison get in my system. It's not going to get in my faith. It's not going to get in my mind. It's not going to get in my heart. I don't care what the onlookers are saying. I don't care who's talking about my past. The beauty of talking about my past is it lets me underline and highlight what God's done for my present. Because I can say, look where the Lord has brought me. Come on, somebody. Don't, don't let the poison get you today. Someone needs to declare that. Oh, it may have killed others. And it may have taken you out a time or two, but not today. You, they can do whatever they want, but the poison is not going to work in you any longer. Come on. You've been spewing some poison about a relationship. You've been spewing poison about a friendship. You've been spewing poison now for, uh, for days about this hurt or that problem or this situation or that one. It's just flowing the poison. It just exudes out of you. just like a fountain. It just keeps coming. And you need to get a hold of that and say, no more poison. You need to say, no more poison. I'm not going to let it surge and course its way through my veins anymore. You need to shut off that and start praising God. Because let's face it, you can't let another's poison kill you. The poison didn't start with Paul. It started with the serpent. And most poison comes from someone else. Uh-oh. This got quiet, didn't it? <laughs> Most poison comes from an outward influence. Someone wants you to take up their offense. Someone wants you to do their fighting. Oh, if you're going to be friends with them, I can't be friends with you. You see, someone's always wanting you to be uh, poisoned by their poison. Poisoned by, you know, yesterday's failures. Poisoned by yesterday's failures fears and you know all the different stuff that's coming and going around us you have to be careful let, let me take you to the garden i'm going to close with this let me take you to the garden of eden for a minute the garden of eden was a beautiful place that's right christine the garden of eden was a beautiful place there was no mosquitoes there is no snakes and all these things and if you look in the garden of eden it says that the garden of eden was made to that's where uh, adam and eve dwelled and that's where god came every single day amen every day god showed up in the garden of eden to fellowship with adam and eve and then god said to adam he said i want you to name every beast of the field now you have to understand field is different than the garden of eden the garden of eden was here and the field was out there there was a fence. There was a whatever you want to call it. But God said to Adam, take. Yeah, the Lord is anti-venom. That anti anti-venom. That's right. And so the Lord said to Adam, I want you to name all the beasts of the field. They're out there. Follow this. What talked to Eve? What, what incited Eve's curiosity to take of the forbidden fruit? It was a serpent. And the serpent. The serpent was a beast of the field. So my question to Adam would be, why did you allow something from the field to get into your garden? 
Because the minute you allow stuff of the field to come into your spiritual garden, it's going to start talking to you until it gets you to question God. Because the serpent said, half God said to Eve. That's why it's so important that the things that are of the field, you need to keep in the field. But the things that are of the garden, you need to protect them in the garden. Because if you let the poison of the field make its way into your garden, the old song used to say, be careful little eyes what you see. Be careful little ears what you hear. There's a father up above and he's looking down in love. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little mouth, what you say. Why? Because that is going to guard your garden. That's what it's going to do. But if you don't guard that spiritual place in your life, if you let that be polluted with all the wrong stuff and all the wrong poisons and all the wrong people, if you start viewing stuff on the internet that you know you shouldn't be, that's going to poison your garden. If you start talking to, you know, someone that you know is not right for you, then that's going to poison your garden. What am I saying? I am saying it's time that we protected ourselves from the poison that wants to be injected into us. Just because others drink the poison doesn't mean you have to shake it off shake it off i'm going to close this out today i hope this has ministered to you today welcome in josh so glad we're at 40 record attendance today in chronicles thank you so much everybody all i'm telling you is how do you deal with a snake bite you just shake it off you don't drink the poison you let go of it. You move forward to the miraculous and you allow God to work for you, to fight for you, to encourage you. And for you that are in here today and you're feeling like you're down and you're feeling like you can't do it and you're feeling like, you know, life is for you. It's over. I'll tell you this. Don't forget God is a God that works with what's left. And if Paul the Apostle can be taken from a prison cell in shackles, put on a boat, shipwrecked in the sea, make it to shore, get bit by a snake, be talked about by onlookers, and be ridiculed and all of that, and still go on to see God move in a miraculous way, if he can do that, then why can't we? Because... Paul was no superhuman. He was just like you and I. And if he can do it, we can do it. I believe in you. God trusts you. And you have what it takes to be strong in your faith. Someone's sitting there right now. You're going, man, I have never felt this, this, this excited and inspired for a long time. I'm glad. But don't walk around in the doldrums thinking that God doesn't care and that you can't make it. Yes, you can. Amen. Joni's going to sing today. But how many would type a comment in there right now? Let me know how this has helped you today. Maybe you want to share with us just this is my struggle. Um, and, and, and it's so this word has helped you so much. We're going to pray for a bearded carpenter's son-in-law as well. He's been running a fever. That's it. That's the truth, Josh. And so all we can do is hold on and let God do what he does best. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Joni's going to sing. Don't go anywhere. She's going to sing. For we are standing on holy ground. Oh, and I know that our angels all around. Yes. 
thoughts or let us praise Jesus now. Amen. For we are standing in his presence. On holy ground. holy ground. Sing at home if you know this. Oh, we are We're standing. standing. We're standing on holy on ground. Holy ground. Amen. And I know. Unholy, unholy, holy ground. Let us praise, so let us, let us praise. Jesus, now How I'm gonna, gonna praise, praise him. Lord, for we are. Standing, standing for we are all standing. Amen. I know, I know we are standing in his presence. We're gonna before we all go, let's pray for Beard Comforter's son in law. Let's pray for Paul's son in law. I'm gonna pray for each one in here. I'm just gonna say a quick prayer. Lord God, thank you so much. We appreciate you and all you do for us. Father in heaven, I can't see each and every person here because we're in a social media setting. But God, you can because you're with them in their homes. You're with them in their vehicles. You're with them in their cabins and wherever they may be. And God, you see so many people dealing with so many things that life is trying to poison them with. I pray, God, you give them the strength to say no to the poisons of life. To shake some things off that they've been harboring and harping on and hanging on to. Let them feel the excitement of a new beginning, of a new miracle, of the miraculous. Let them know that you're keeping them and helping them and there's hope and there's strength and healing. For Paul's son-in-law, I pray God this fever would break. God, you're the healer and we're praying right now that Lord, that fever would be gone today, not tomorrow. But today, if you would, please, Father, let your will be done. And God, you're the miracle-working God. Help this ministry to grow and to explode with the good news of everything that we're talking about. God, thank you for a record number of people two days in a row. And God, now next week, we stand amazed to see what you will do. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> God is good. Thank you, Jesus. And so we thank you for being here. If you like to support the channel, this ministry, you can just through PayPal. Um, thank you, Jesus. And Jesse always is so good at putting that link up. And I, it just it helps us. It really does. 
Um, not saying you have to, <clears throat> saying if you'd like to support the ministry, feel free to do so. We appreciate it. But each one of you, we're so glad you're here. We cannot tell you how excited and how elated we are. <laughs> yes. Um, this is the highlight of our week right absolutely. here. Absolutely. And we absolutely, absolutely love each and every one of you. You guys are amazing mm -hmm. and uh, you serve an amazing God. And if we can help anybody, we don't have, you know, finances and things like that. We just don't. But if we can help you through prayer, through listening, through any counsel that we can give, if you need somebody to talk to, um, all of that, any of it, um, we're here for you. We're here for you. And so we appreciate you guys all so we very, say hello very to Corrine, much. Corrine and Marvin. And Corrine and Marvin. Yeah. God bless you awesome. guys. And so shout out the channel. Um, all the new ones that were here today, Josh, great to see you in here, my friend. And uh, it's all good. God is with us for sure. Absolutely. We have and some new, new we folks did. here today. Um, and Dale, God bless you guys at Nine Acre. We love you guys. Um, Joe and, and so many others that were here today. Um, Jerry, take care. Um, Hound of Goshen, I want to say thank you. Uh, personally to you guys for yes. always supporting us as thank well. You so and much, thank Curtis you so much for that, Curtis and Kate. Thank Kaint. you very much. Um, and anybody else that we may have missed, thank you for being here. Um, you guys truly are awesome. <laughs> uh, you guys are great. So have a great day. Love God. Love each other. Do something nice for somebody. And I'm telling you right now, if you have um, you know, been fighting with that poison, how do you deal? How do you treat a snake bite? You just shake it off. Don't let it penetrate your, your soul right. and keep on going. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> it has to continue, Christine. <laughs> That's right. And Marvin said that was him today. Uh, Marvin, God bless you, my friend. And say hello to your wife. Yeah. So anyway, you guys take care. Um, we'll see you Tuesday night. We are going, uh, going to be live. Um, we're looking at ways to change your format up a bit. So you never know what we'll be doing, but um, you know, it's going to be good. So take this, care. This is the pre-service for some yeah, folks. Yeah. Off, yeah. Cause some are going off the church off now. To your own service. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> but y'all take care. God bless you. That's Thank great. you for your prayers. And we shall see you um, right back here um, next Sunday. And Hey, record Sunday today for yes. attendance. So let's bring yes. a friend next Sunday is friend Sunday. Friend Sunday. Yeah. Friend Sunday. So God bless you and guys. And tomorrow's Tony's birthday. Yeah. Tomorrow's my so, birthday. <laughs> um, I'll do a little Instagram post. If you're on Instagram, if you're not already following us, follow us and you can come <laughs> over and, and give him some birthday greetings. Yeah. Well, we love you, Christine, Johnny, and each and every one of you guys. We really, truly do. Hey, uh, Mountain Grandma. How are hey, you, Tammy? Tammy? Glad to have Good you in. Good to have you in again. I hate closing this out because everyone is so <laughs> great to, I know. to be here, you know. So. I know. But uh, thank you for the birthday wishes. We appreciate yes. it. Yes. And uh, keep us in your prayers. Um, you know, we need some miracles on this end for some things for our house. Uh, we really do. And uh, but, but God, God knows, knows. Um, He really does. God knows. You know. And and we know that God. Yeah. So we know that God. I'm so glad that we serve yep. a God that not only hears but He answers. For sure. For sure. He answers. Yep. So and we're testimony to that, and you all are yep. too. <laughs> for sure. There's all the everyone's, addresses. <laughs> everyone's saying happy birthday, dear. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Well, God is good to us and uh, just another year older. <laughs> hey, Mike. Old school Mick. Yeah. Hey, Mike. How you doing? So he says he's going to watch the replay. Tammy's yeah. going to watch it also. And that's the beauty awesome. of having uh, the replay. Are. And I hope you guys enjoy these. You know, um, I enjoy preaching. I There's nothing more that I love talking about than the Bible. And if you've ever been in a live with some of us where we get talking about the Bible and God and spiritual things and stuff, you will know that I it is my right. number one thing that Favorite I topic. love to talk well, about. Well, it so. is it is our calling. It is. So. It is our calling. That's it, Christine. Friend Sunday. Friend Next Sunday. Sunday. Friend Sunday. Friend Sunday. So that's what we're gonna call it. Um yeah. and we'll see. I don't know. Maybe we'll do something special. I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll have a friend here. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll go find a friend. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. Joyfully Orange. That's a great song. Yeah, for sure. Um, the address we use, are you, uh, when it comes to physical address to send things to us, 
um, from the U.S. Just send it to our our Holton um, post office box, and it's all in our about tab. Yeah, it's on our about tab of, of our other channel. Yeah, but right, but it is. Um, Maples. Yeah, but it's simply oh, our, our address. Here. Yes, our Holton address. It's PO Box one twenty one. PO Box one twenty one. Holton. That's spelled H O U L T O N. Maine. Holton, Maine. Zero four seven three zero. Yes. So <laughs> that's right, Jesse, and we are uh, we are friends with Jesse. We yes, love you guys dearly. We sure do. We sure and do. And Christine, definitely, and Dale, I, love we you. agree with that. We we agree together. God will. Hey, meet Cindy, me. happy birthday! She says. Well, thank you. <laughs> oh, Cindy. Cindy. Hey, Cindy's our dear, 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 dear friend. <laughs> and they're coming up here in a month. Yeah. So got to come up and, and uh, spend some time and yeah, help. There's us. the address there. Um. So oh, the, Sam, you yeah, are more than welcome. The Canadian address. That is from both um, of us. Yes. The Canadian address, if if you're in Canada, you mm -hmm. can just send it to, um, what is our address here? Isn't that awful? It is um, 7260. <sighs> yes. Route 102. Yep. Dumfries, spelled D-U-M-F-R-I-E. Yes, S, yes. New Brunswick. You can just do abbreviation NB. Yep. Canada. Canada. Postal code E6G1P7. <laughs> and again, go. we have Jessie's all this under right our about time. Thank you, Jesse. But Jesse has them too. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Jerry. Hey, well, my wild home. That's hey, yes. Welcome, Ryan, Ryan and, and Mel. How are you guys doing? Welcome, guys. Two of the sweetest people there are, are on, I've been on the earth. trying to catch up a little bit on their. <laughs> I know they're busy on they're their busy. channel, and, and they're they're living the island life. Yeah, and they're busy <laughs> like we're busy, just trying to get things built before well, cold weather sets in. We so. have winter yep. approaching. Yep. Yeah, pray for us. We're really trying to get. We need to get a couple projects done, but we just need some. We need some miracles to get them done. So God knows, but pray that God supplies what we need to get some things ready for the winter. But, um, you know, thank you. But um, we're already further ahead. We are. Than we were we last are, year. We are. Those of you um, who've been here with us. God we're, has we're been so good. We're going into winter in a house and we yep. have our firewood cut and <laughs> it's all ranked up. Yeah. All right. God knows that is the truth. So listen, it's been fun yes. um i could sit here and talk all day but i know you all got churches to go to yes. and yep. you know family and all that no more tent that is it right no there tent. hey that's a name for a book right there jesse mm -hmm. yeah i'm gonna call it no more tent well i've been thinking <laughs> of writing a little one called from the tent to the house <laughs> uh, well. and we live in a house of blessing yeah for sure that's it. No more tent. <laughs> we are content. <laughs> <laughs> we are content, yeah. not in the tent. Yeah, that's it. So listen, folks, we love you. Take care. Um, yeah, Jesse, don't get jealous, okay? <laughs> My heavens. Just, Jesse, just... <laughs> I'm sure that they love you guys, too. I know they do. I know Mel and Ryan, they love everybody. Yes. So yes. you guys are awesome. <laughs> God knows another good song. She said, Tammy said, that's right. Tammy. Yeah. They uh, says he's got peaches to pick. Peaches I, to pick. I don't have none of those, <laughs> <laughs> but we do have apples. We have. Oh lots. yes. And what was the kind you discovered last night? Well, um, if you watched our review of the sacred saw, yeah. um, you'll find that I liberated an apple tree yeah. from amongst a bunch of other uh, trees um, on our Creekside maples uh, channel. Mm -hmm. Um, and those apples are really doing good. They're nice and, and red and tasty. Mm -hmm. um, and they're Macintosh. Yes. So that's awesome. So and that would be yeah. that would be a true Macintosh. Yeah. Because the, these are old established trees here yep. on this property. So, yep. so yeah. anyway, we're just trying to bring back the old apple trees and, and the pear tree and all that. <laughs> back to God. Welcome. Back and to I good. Saw, back to good. And I saw your <laughs> comment uh, earlier of how... It was 7 a.m. for you and that you yeah, said earlier you. than you normally would get up with that. You said, God must really want me to be here to hear this. So to we appreciate that. <laughs> so, yeah, again, everybody, thank you guys so much. Uh, um, Christine says, I'll read those books. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I do have a couple I'm working on. I'm, I'm going to try to get them done through the winter months. 
<laughs> and um, yes, try to get Anne, him up there, you so. are a very sweet lady. Anne is. I mean, Anne exudes sweetness. She does. And I, <laughs> I, I just enjoy hearing her voice. Uh, so you guys, while you're fighting over who's the sweetest, uh, just whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that saw did reveal the apples. Yes, it did. It did. Yeah. It did. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You were uh, the first of five churches. Joy on Florence, Deb today. says. Okay. Says, That's awesome. <laughs> Very good. Lots of church. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Nothing wrong with that. So. The apple of what yeah. Eve gave to Adam, just saying. Or the apple yeah. is. Well, the, the thing is, it doesn't, doesn't call it an apple, no, Jesse. It, it says the forbidden fruit. Forbidden fruit. It doesn't name it as an apple. That's a misnomer. Um, it, it, it doesn't. It's just like, you know, Jonah in the whale. It doesn't say a whale. It says great fish. It. That's it. Um, but we assume those things. But that, I'm just I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Well, guys, thank you. Yes, Sam. And, we're happy uh, that you survived the storm. And many of you have. You've been surviving the yeah. hurricanes. Yeah. And, and you've all been in our prayers. Hey, let me ask this before you all go. Is there any topic or scripture or story that you would like? Yeah, Jesse, details, details, <laughs> details. Um, that you would like me to speak about, um, elaborate on, perhaps do a, a study on. And present it on Chronicles. Any, any, anybody out there for be, before we shut it down? Anything you'd like, um, you know, me to talk about? Um, you know, I'm just putting that out there right now mm -hmm. before we before we sign off today. And uh, it could be, you know, something that we could put together a study on. So, and that's there a, you go, that's Deb. Be led by God. Be led by I God. love it. Yes. I love that. And he truly is. He truly is. And that's good. But, you know, and I'll do that. So, but I also know that sometimes people have a story they don't understand or they're trying to figure out what it means or what's this, you know, whatever. Um, but anyway, yeah, the difference of the two different Canadian parties. Good luck with that, Jesse. Unfortunately, Jesse, that's not hey, in the Gia Bible. Hey, How are you doing? Hey, the Holy Spirit. Ephesians, the full armor of God. The full armor. I like that That's one. That's it. Those are good, good, good topics. The armor. I'm writing this down. Anne says she loves the story of Jonah. No matter where we go, we can't run from God. Um, Joel Fix It wants our email. It's um, Creekside Maples at gmail.com. Yes. That is Creekside Maples. That's a plural on the end of Maples at gmail.com and Jonah. I love the story of Jonah as mm -hmm. well. That is so good. It's rich, rich with stuff in there. It's really good. <laughs> and that is it, you know, and, uh, you That's know, we will, sister. they like the full armor too. Yeah. But yeah. we will, um, definitely, um, you know, be led of the Holy ghost yep. and, uh, you know, see what there's a fly buzzing there around, is. see what God wants us to talk about. But I absolutely love, um, being here every Sunday with you guys. So take care. God bless you. And uh, remember, God loves you. We love you. And you are victorious Absolutely. through Christ. Nothing can take you down we unless you let mighty. it. All right. Daniel and the lions. And that's a great one there. And I don't call that Daniel and the lions. I call that lions and Daniel's, Daniel's den. den. That's right. He does. <laughs> don't forget, read some sort of devotional. Get you one. Get you one. You can even go to the dollar store and you can buy devotional books. Yeah. How many of you have ever seen these devotional books? Is there any one person on here that you just feel like this would help you so much? Anybody on here this morning just that you would just say. If you don't Man, already have one, the first don't one. don't have one. The first one to put in comments, me. <laughs> then what are we going to do? Send one? We are seated in Christ. Far above. That is a good one, Deb. That's a good Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Our seat. Our seat. Our seating arrangement. That's right. And Josh, you have a great day also. Also. Back to go good says they're getting one for their for kids. For their kids, okay. Okay. The hem of the garment. Oh, That's a good Sam, one. I like that the one. Baton, the hem of his garment. You guys, I always think of here. that song. That's a wonderful song. I think that was Dottie Rambo. I think wrote that. There's so many powerful types about the garment. <laughs> All right. So you guys take care. Um, 
and uh, Rebecca says, I have that book in my hand. Yes, Rebecca, yes, isn't it do. awesome? <laughs> Joel Fixes says, He will look for it. I have a devotional <laughs> I've used for almost 20 years, it never gets old. Me too, me too. I've got a lot of good ones. I have one called Diamonds for Dusty Roads oh. that somebody gave me 30 years ago when I was we were just newly married. End and, times is a very good topic, Jesse. Very good topic. Preach about the second coming. That's it, which is fast approaching. Yep. So do you want to? Well, we can definitely. I have a whole series that I've developed on the end times and the second coming. I mean, it is. I mean, it's deep, um, really deep, and it'll take some time. But uh, if people would like to hear about some of that, I mean, I don't mind teaching it. So well, you all are wonderful. Take care. God bless you. Um, and we'll talk to you again. You've been a wonderful congregation today. Yes. <laughs> Just Shout as amen. Us how we can get their mess listening channels and need to learn names. We need to yeah. go deep. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Well, I uh, I love the deep word of God. You, you I can't stay in the shallows. You know, I uh, I like dissecting the word of God. I mean, every single part of it and pulling out the, the, the little things that perhaps so many people miss. Um, you know, that's just the way God has anointed my mind to be able to um, understand the scriptures, you know, like that. Not that I'm any better than anyone else. I'm not. I just believe that God has given me the ability to um, really look at scriptures in a different way. And I'm so thankful that he does so. No, Sam, I think the same thing too. So unworthy. I think of the song, Friend of God. I am a friend of God. Yeah, but Who am I that you're mindful of me? We're not righteous by our own righteousness, but we are made righteous by the righteous sacrifice in the blood of Jesus Christ, Sam. That is the truth. So anyway, you guys take care and we'll see you back here. We got to end this. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs> God bless. I've got, a, I've got a birthday cake I have to go make. Yeah, and I got a birthday cake I got to go <laughs> eat. German chocolate. He's requested. <laughs> take care. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.